Hello, my name is Sean McClary, and I'm making a few videos here uh, in celebration of the 105th birthday of Les Paul. I'll be making these videos um, in order to show uh, how Les Paul championed a certain kind of recording, which he called sound on sound. So what I want to do is I want to show how he did it, um, and I want to show what he used to do it, and where he did it. I had a earlier video that you can also watch where I show what's called direct to disc recording. Um, and in that video, I go through uh, all of the equipment that's used in record cutting. Um, and I won't do that here in this video today. So if you want to go back to the earlier video and, and have a look at that before watching this one, then uh, I'll put a link there that you can uh, click to watch that. It might help to talk a little bit about overdubbing. That is the practice of recording music on one disc and then playing it back on a turntable and then blending that music with another part recorded on top. So then two parts are then recorded on the second disc. So Les's recording technique of sound on sound uses overdubbing, but then goes much, much further to push the boundaries of recorded music. Here's Les Paul in his home recording studio. He built a studio in his garage, which is the back of his house in Hollywood, California. The house was at 1514 North Curson Avenue. Here's the same spot today. Unfortunately, the house is gone. Um, this is the same angle from the previous picture, just a little bit further back. In the garage was this recording studio. And you'll see Les here. He's sitting in the control room behind the glass. And over here in the what's called the live room or the recording room is Mary Ford. And you'll notice here that there's just a four channel mixer, a very simple recording console. And this is a homemade record cutting lathe. The platter for it, or the turntable, um, he was looking for just the right size, which was needed to be about 16 inch in diameter. And he asked his father, who was a mechanic, he said, I, I need this part, where do I find it? And his father went out and found uh, a part in his shop which is a Cadillac flywheel, and he built this lathe and he cut records on it. You'll notice that Les is over here with his lathe, and then Mary is over here with another record cutting lathe. Um, here is a picture of it today. Uh, currently, it, it, the lathe resides at the Mawa Museum in Mawa, New Jersey. Now this lathe, uh, before I move on, is made by a company called Arcturus, which was in California, in Los Angeles. So it's the Arcturus lathe. This right here is what's called the cutting amplifier. Um, it not only amplifies the signal going into the cutter head, but it also provides an equalization curve. Um, over on this side, uh, this part is what's called the heater, and this provides a little bit of heat to the stylus. If the stylus is a little hot, it can cut those grooves a little bit better. It's like cutting into softer butter than hard butter. So over here is the cutter head, much more high fidelity cutter head than he had on the other record cutter, his homemade one. This is the motor which drives the, the turntable, but there's two different gear points or two different places where that belt would go. 33 and a third RPM and the other is for 78 RPM. 78 RPM was the standard cutting speed and playback speed for records in the 1940s. And yet this cutting lathe could play and record at both speeds. This was important because Les wanted to use these speeds to create the effects that he did in his sound on sound recording. Using these different speeds in his recording process is what Les referred to as vary speed or variable speed. Sound on sound recording is overdubbing that goes well beyond the standard practice of overdubbing, using special effects like very speed and also phase shifting to create an otherworldly sonic environment. Les was the first person to record in this way. He used his equipment to create music that couldn't be performed live, certainly not in the same way that he recorded it. I'm going to get a couple brand new lacquered discs out. So they look like this. 
I put the disc on the record cutter and I'm going to get the cutter head just right onto the edge of the disc. So I'm going to try to record an acoustic guitar part for Vaya con Dios um, and I'll do two parts. I'm going to do an acoustic guitar part and I'm going to sing the harmony uh, vocal part so too. So I'm going to engage the knife and bring down the cutter head and you'll start to see a little bit of cutting. So you see a thread happening there, so I'm recording. Okay, it's important that I do a little count off so that I know where to start on the next turn. Turn off the heater, bring the overhead back. You can see all the swarf here. Stop this thing. So I'm going to do the second part, and I'm going to play the bass for this part, and I'll also sing the lead vocals. Uh, so this will be blended in with the record that I just made, the recording I just made on that lacquer disc. So I'll play that back on the turntable, and I'll record it at the same time that I do this take. Now the hacienda is dark, the town is sleeping. Now the time has come to part, the time for weeping. Vaya con Dios, my darling. Vaya con Dios, my love. Now the hacienda is dark, the town is sleeping. Now the time has come to part, the time for weeping. Vaya con Dios, my darling. Vaya con Dios, my love. Okay, so here's the master disc. Um, this is the disc with the two overdubbed parts on it. And one thing you might notice by listening back, especially if you listen closely with headphones, is that the second overdub did not sound as good as the first recording. The sound degraded ever so slightly, or actually maybe it degraded quite a bit. Well, this is why it wasn't standard practice for recording engineers to work this way, um, and why Les was such a pioneer by perfecting this method. It took him over 10 years of experiments to get to the point where he could release something to the public. Uh, Les's sound on sound was two or three or four or more overdubs plus experimental effects mixed in with that. In the next video, I'll demonstrate other aspects of sound on sound, such as vary speed and phase shifting, and I'll be taking apart Les's recording on Capitol Records in 1948 of the popular song Lover. And I'll be playing his parts on the guitar to demonstrate the techniques he used to create the new sounds. Thanks for watching, and happy birthday, Les!